Jake, did you hear about Mickey James? Oh, no. Whenever a wrestler is in the news, it's never good. Is, did she get arrested? Did she die? What's happening? She's not arrested, nor is she dead. She's going to be in the Royal Rumble. In WWE? Yes. But they're the ones who sent her a garbage bag. Yeah, but it turns out they recycled her. Mickey James walks through the forbidden door and so much more today on Pro Wrestling Pals. Welcome to Pro Wrestling Palskis. How's it going, Scott? It's going great, Jake. How are you? I am uh, very excited to be here hanging out with the uh, Patreon Palskis. Thanks to everybody who's joining us live via the super exclusive, um, sometimes hard to find, uh, Patreon live stream. Um, A little bit different this week. We're mixing stuff up, Scott. Yeah, this is now a two-act play. (laughs) This is now a two-act play. Um, slight change to the format. If you're listening to this in the pod feed, um, Scott and I are, 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 t- are making some minor tweaks here. Um, we are now going to, I'm going to be- start working out and Jake's going to become a vegan. So oh. big changes, everybody. I don't big changes. I don't agree to that at all. Oh, great. I didn't want to work out. Yeah. Awesome. Great. Yeah. 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 Forget that. Um, but, uh, t- it's a news week. Uh, that's what we're doing here. Uh, in lieu of our, what has become incredibly long, multi-part episodes, we're splitting them up. Um, so we're going to be chatting just the news this week. That would allow us to kind of really actually spend some time on it instead of rushing through it to get to the main topic of a show. And the next week, we'll have a discussion program uh, like you are used to without news. Um, that will allow Scott and I to, uh, you know, kind of make this a little bit easier, a little bit more relaxed. That's been the, the sort of the message of the Palski since this whole thing started was to like, how do we make this? incredibly chill yeah and get some netflix in (laughs) oh you're the only person who um netflix and chill you get upset when there's not enough netflix i peacock and grr oh what's the grr is that the is that your opposite of chill that's the ads i'm like (laughs) Oh, I don't want to see Drew McIntyre drink Splash Blast. I don't give a fuck. Splash Blast? Well, please tell me that's real and I am not in the know. I'm close to the name of that stupid drink. It looks terrible. He looks he looks so uh, upset to be there doing that commercial. It's not good. Splash WWE Blast. and wrestlers have had many a fun commercial throughout the years. This is not one of them. What? I'm curious to what the fuck is Splash Blast? Is it a soda? Is it a? It looks like it's some flavored water. Oh, but they don't like really mount- go into it. They talk like about mount everything Dew else. Flavor. No, it 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 looks it just looks bland and boring. Um, well, bland and boring is not at all what this program is about, right, Scott? Scott is coming to you live from the Thunder, uh, the Thunderdome. No, WCW I'm Thunderdome. Not in the Thunderdome. That's no, what Gil they in the chat with Thunderdome. Gil in the chat says Scott's in the WCW Thunderdome. No, he's conditioned all wrong. I'm at WCW Thunder Dome. No, that's dumb. Thunder Dome. Yeah. Um. Are you in the Thunder Void? One of our, one of our Palskis? We're not that close yet. Oh, okay. Give it time. A few more episodes. We'll slide right in and peacock and grr. Give it time. Uh, well, Scott Narver, since it is our first official exclusive news week, uh, what's, what sort of fun stuff is happening in the world of pro wrestling? There is so much news that we even have backup news in case this news doesn't do it for everybody, but it damn well should because we got a lot. So let's talk some hirings. AEW, as of Dynamite, we saw the debut and possibly in the... In the Black Brigade, I forget what they're called, but Malachi Black might be adding people to his group. We have Brody King, who is now All Elite. Brody King from, going All Elite. Is he using the name Brody King? He is using the name Brody King. Uh, 
And you said Are you that familiar. I, I'm yeah, I'm familiar with him. I don't. I'm familiar in quotes. Like I know what he looks like. I know his name. I know that a lot of people love him. Yeah, I couldn't tell you the name of his finisher, or you know, a a, a popular bout that I have seen. Um, I couldn't either. I couldn't tell you those things. I'm, I'm, we're probably about the same amount of familiarity. Like I've seen him a few times, um, over the years and I've never not liked what I saw, Yeah, but I was never compelled enough to keep watching. Got it. So I always heard good things and I was like, yeah, he seems fine. And I think by about now, ideally he's got the full package, right? He's on TV. He's going to be doing a thing. So I'm hoping for good stuff here. And you said that he joined a, a, an existing group or real life friends of his? Well, they're talking. Malachi Black is always talking about these things as like, oh, there's a family or there's a dark presence and we have books and, right. you know, everything's brooding. I, I, I don't know. I, I can't really retain all the information that Excalibur says. Sure. Because it just it just starts to leak out of my head after a while. So <laughs> yeah, maybe the chat knows. It's a lot what it is but i i i don't know i don't know um and you know brody king is you know biker goth like he 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 could fit they could make him into a creepy character if they wanted to but he could also easily fit in with like you know um butcher and blade or uh like he you know he's there's there's a lot of like types i feel heavily tattooed facial haired enthusiast gentleman yeah yes um the House of Black. Thank you, Tim Bemis. There we go. The House of Black is what they're calling it? Yeah. That's um, what uh, Malachi Black's been referring to for several weeks and talking about that. So, And is is it already? There was no there was no like handshake deal like, we're in the House of Black together. But he came right. out to help him. And uh, I was going to ask if um, the House of Black specifically has members already. Or is it exclusively uh, a, a construct at this point? No, it's just Malachi and these vignettes. And then we see people in robes and stuff. So we don't know if they're just coming to visit for the day. Got it. You know, or if they're <laughs> just uh, in-laws like visiting members. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It could be like those uh, seminars, you know, where the monks have people show up, pay a lot of money and go, yeah, you can't talk for the whole weekend. Right, 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 right. People go, oh, this is going to be great. We can't do this at home. You can't not talk at all. I feel like you of all people could probably succeed at doing that. I try constantly. <laughs> hey, are you going to do dinner? I think that's talking. You th- yeah, think aggravated ex- sigh. Yeah. Aggravated sighs and any sort of vocalization of breath, I think would be, get you kicked off of the, the, uh, the soundless commune. Yeah. So, okay. So we, if we have Brody King and we have Malachi Black, who's your third? Who do you make a uh, trio? For the House of Black, um, you put and they can't be in another faction in AEW currently. But everybody's in a faction, though. Mm -mm, Um, Can't break up factions. You can only add to new one. Um. All right. I am literally looking up the AEW roster because I need to look at who's not in a. Why you can also look up firings. (laughs) A look up WWE firings or AEW roster. Yeah, but um, on the roster, chances are everybody's already in a faction. Is Damian Priest still employed with WWE? I, I Man, believe so, but the now dark. that you brought it up, he's probably got fired. It, everybody has an of the underneath their name. It's like this, of the acclaimed, of the hybrids, of the Dark Order, of the Dark Order, of the something, the gun club, of the factory. Um, do, do Does the Undisputed Era have a name yet in AEW? Like, have they come up with a name for their group yet? No. Um, what about Brian Cage? He could use a little edge. He, uh, well, yeah, I guess he's not in Team Tez anymore. So yeah, and he could use a little like, but he doesn't. He doesn't have a bunch of tattoos. You're right. Is that part of it? Do we need to have? Is that part of it? You said you're familiar with Brody King. He looks like he's but he it, but also is that part fell of... asleep drunk at a party, much like Malachi Black. <laughs> um. All right. So now it's exclusively people with tattoos. 
Um, well, it's got to be CM Punk. He's the only person I could think of who's not in a fucking organization covered in tattoos. There you go. There's a lot of... I'm surprised at how few people have tattoos on this roster, considering how popular tattoos are these days. In fairness, I'm only seeing their shoulders up. Oh, boy. That's all you need. Alex Raider points out uh, King and Black are PWG tag team champions. Oh, well, there you go. Um, um, Man, everybody is in a group or too clean a baby face. So that's my. Oh, you know what? What about Lance Archer? He fits in with them, too. A murder hawk. Yes, he fits in just fine. Um, Maybe he can become. That, a- was, that was fun last night when watching AEW Dynamite with friends. Uh, Lance Archer comes back. It's a whole big brouhaha with uh, Adam Page shows up. He's doing a move to Adam Page. And uh, one of as there's three of us watching. One of the guys goes, uh, so when's Moxley coming back? <laughs> Which means right. I'm watching something right now. I'm fully aware that this person has come back. I have no interest in this. And I'm already thinking of the next person wow. that I'd rather see on television. It was just such a funny moment of, oh, it's Lance Archer. He's back. Oh, my God. What's happening? Hey, when's Moxley coming back? <laughs> That is, I think that you've kind of uh, captured my issue with with the, see, I can't even bother to remember his name, Archer. Um, I always say Murderhawk because I'm like, I'll just say that and they won't realize I've forgotten his name for the 17th time. Uh, is he kind of is forgettable in that way? Like he's, there's nothing exciting to me about him. I think he should be with Brody King because I feel like just put him in the back and make him grunt and moan. Give him your uh, peacock, peacock and gur. Let him peacock and gur in the back, and then I don't think you want him to do that. No, not on TV. Not on TV. No. All right, I got another tattooed individual who could go with Brody King. Okay. Uh, Leo Rush. Ugh. Leo Rush with Brody King and uh, and Malachi Black. They're all like like cryptic dark messages and speaking from the depths of the void from which the souls of darkness, blah, blah, blah. And Leo Rush just like, I'm here too, you guys. I'm here too. I'm going to yell at my boss on Twitter. Um, uh, Alice Raider in the chat. It was kind of dead for Archer's return. Moxley should be back soon. He's wrestling for GCW this month. Yeah, we're going to get into that in a little bit here. Uh, Gil says that Penta would be a good member for for uh, the House of Black. But he's in a faction. Disqualified. Is there no a go. Is there a wrestler with the uh the last name White? Right now? Kerwin. Kerwin Paul White? Sure there's him too, but I mean, I think House Kerwin of- White's a much bigger star. I just like the idea of someone starting a House of White and then it's just like when you go to medieval times. And it's like, how, white, who's the white champion? Who is the House of Blacks champion? And then we well, all get, finally, and then we all the get a turkey whites leg. and the blacks fighting on TV. Finally. What a great idea. <laughs> oh, all right, fine. Then make them fucking House Green. Who do I give a shit? Chelsea Green in the House Green. Uh, also, PCO signs a contract with Impact Wrestling. The deal allows PCO to work indie shows, but also, uh, you know, be it with that he has to prioritize impact wrestling dates. So that's pretty exciting. Initially, when I saw Brody King, I go, Hey, I think that's and then I went, No, wait, because then they said, It's Brody King. But at times I've since I don't watch either one too much, those two guys kind of shared space in my brain in the same spot. Right. But when I see the two, I know I know that they're clearly different, but when you don't take them in all the time. So I was excited that the announcement of both guys, I'm like, great. They both have a gig. They both are big, huge dudes somewhere and right. can uh, start start making a difference. Uh, yeah, a PCO is one of those guys who I know people are big into. And I don't, I, lo- I, he's sort of one of those people who would like just his intensity and who he is is like what makes it kind of fun. Um, yeah. Where like there's a tongue in cheek to PCO that I really appreciate. Yeah, I like that he's older, and yeah. like you said, his energy levels are are crazy. So I can, he, I'm excited for him to be in bigger situations, right? With more people being behind him to get him all that much more amped, right? Yeah, for sure. 
So uh, we've also got some title changes that happened this past week. Jake, I know you're going to be excited for this one. The Alpha Academy has finally come to fruition and they have graduated into Raw Tag Team Champions. So what are they now? Just Alpha Champions? They just dropped Academy? Well, not only dropped Academy, they dropped Tucker long ago. So Chad Gable. I mean, well, first they dropped Jordan. Right. And then, they, you know, because let's not forget, at one point, this started as American Alpha years and years ago. Uh, but this is the Alpha Academy. It's totally different. Completely different. And Otis and Chad Gable have defeated RK Bro to become the Raw Tag Team Champions. I saw like Chad Gable's post and it I'm not going to lie. It was one of those instances where it actually made me like them a little bit more as a tag team. Because on screen, it felt very much like Otis was getting this big push and we all loved the stuff he was doing with Mandy. And it was like, oh, this is kind of fun. And we like this guy. And then I think you the say pandemic. We a lot. What do you say? You say we a lot. <laughs> we as in the collective wrestling universe that you were sometimes a part of. Mm. Um, well, uh, I feel like the pandemic and just their poor writing just pulled the rug out from Otis entirely. And this very much felt like here are two guys who are nothing alike, have nothing to do with each other. Let's just put them together because maybe we can get comedy out of it. And then eventually it could be serious. I did not know that these two are actually like very long time friends in real life. And this was their thing that they decided to do. And that anytime that's the case, it always makes me a little bit happier. It's like the new day where it's like, these are guys who kind of were like, yeah, let's make the best of the scenario. Let's try to like, you know, with that said, you a know, single white female of alpha. wrestling isn't isn't every single one of these people his friend that he's wanted to do this with? Who is that? Which one? Chad Gable. Oh, Gable. I didn't, I couldn't tell which person you were referring to because I've re- referred to him in the past as a single, single white, white female, female of wrestling, yeah. where he just goes, "Hey, can I dress as you?" And I'll I'll be the same as you. I will say the. I, I do think though that like. I don't think him and Jordan knew each other. I think those were just people that they threw together in NXT. Well, aren't Otis and Tucker longtime buddies? That is very true. And dropped him. Dropped him. Didn't. Why not bring him on board now that you've made a tag team? Why don't you expand Alpha Academy? Yeah, then uh, then Chad is, Gable can fall in love with Tucker, is, a la Mandy. Is Tucker still employed? No. You don't, d- Guaranteed he's not? Definitely not? I don't guaranteed yeah okay. I, I don't know if you were just saying that because you're like no clearly he's not or if you knew for fact because out of all I, the uh, names yes to both oh all right out of all the names i feel like there's a lot i remember but a lot i don't remember and i wouldn't be surprised when was the just... last time you saw tucker on television um you can say that about randy orton and the answer is a very long time ago <laughs> no it isn't because you talked about it a couple weeks ago though you watch randy orton on tv um, well, you had stuff on going in the background and sure, you watch yeah. Randy Orton the and beginning of the pay-per-view. You are correct. Riddle. You got me. You're right. It's all a facade and a lie. Um, remember the yeah, match no, between Otis and Tucker that they had after they broke up because they didn't have one because shortly thereafter they fired Tucker. Right. Right. Oh, boy. Tim B. Miss in the chat says not OK with Alpha winning the belts. They need more players in the game. I mean. They have plenty of players. They just need better writing and to put good teams together for longer periods of time. I will say I'm like, and I said it when I mentioned I turned on that pay-per-view, but I'm glad that RK bro at least lasted this long with the titles because that felt very transitional when it happened. That felt like, oh, let's have a feel good moment for the fans who like these two. And then let's have them dump the titles to somebody else, you know, two weeks later. So it just seemed like Randy was going to RKO riddle. Very quickly. And, right. Uh, some people are saying, uh, let me see, Nuggets saying, isn't Riddle hurt? Isn't that why they won? So that's oh. also a possibility. Probably. There it is. Did he, Not br- everyone... did he finally break a goddamn toe? Did he hurt his foot? Put some goddamn shoes on, Rusev. No, that all the injuries are over on AEW this past week. <laughs> Uh, Good God almighty, was there it's almost injuries? Like, it's almost like it's kind of dangerous over there. <laughs> Well, it's not too safe over WWE either. I don't know where it's true safe uh, anywhere. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, Jake Atlas 
got hurt in his first match mm-hmm. uh, against Adam Cole and um, uh, Ray Phoenix in their title match. Also a title change. Uh, the Lucha Bros lost their AEW Tag Team Championships to uh, Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus and a and a nasty. I can't believe it's only a dislocation. I know. Have you seen that? Yeah. I unfortunately I watched it uh, thinking that like. I'm sure it's not that bad. I feel like once we saw Vicious, once we saw Sid with the ankle, I was like, ah, nothing is that terrible, but oh God. Well, it's not just the ankle. It's also the bone the, popping yeah. up through his leg. Well, I don't think I ever, I don't think I had that good of a high definition program for that specific one. It's not. You just Ooh. see a red nub Ugh. shoot out of his flesh. I never saw so that. It becomes abundantly Tim- clear. Hey, everybody, uh, at Jake Lloyd Bacon on, on Twitter, uh, Tim please send Jake that image of Sid. Tim Bima says Phoenix broken arm. Is there, is this, was that the original thing? And then it's, it was discovered. It was just a dislocation. I think as what he has said, as, as Atlas is saying, like his knee's going to be fine. No big deal. Even though he was screaming his head off during the show. Right. Yeah. Uh, Phoenix says it's a dislocation. They, they said it's not a break. I don't know if there's tears or anything else. He, he hasn't posted anything else as of a few minutes ago that I saw. Anyway, so. It's like, well, it's a dislocation. You see, the bone is usually one big bone, and then the front of the bone dislocated from the back of the bone, <laughs> and then they both went in separate directions. What well, his reminded me of, not so much Sid, I know people keep making that comparison, but it's to me, it's Eddie Guerrero doing the frog splash. Oh, when he right. First debuted in WWF because when he right. lands, he lands on his, on, his forearms and elbow on yeah. his forearm and elbow. And then it goes, burnt. it goes the outside the other way. Yeah. Much like Phoenix's arm where oh, you go. God. Oh, look at that. It's horrifying. Yeah, that's pretty great. So, yeah, we have new tag team champions on AEW. Uh, and we also have an interim TNT champion because someone watched. MMA one time and thought this was a good idea to incorporate into wrestling, which I am completely opposed to. So Cody was not medically cleared to have the match at Battle of the Belts. Uh, it's rematch against Sammy because Cody had recently won the TNT Championship back from Sammy. Right. And then it was a rematch. But instead, Dustin Rhodes took his place and great match. Mostly weird shit happened in between with Fuego de So living under the ring and busting on a table. Oh, and that's fun. Sammy wins. And, uh, we're going to see Cody again on TV right. next week. So because why he, there'd be an interim champion makes no sense. Like he wins and wins the title, even though he beat a substitute. Well, either one of them could have won the interim title. Right. So it wasn't, it wasn't Dustin right. fighting on behalf of Got it. Got Cody. It. This is a thing in MMA when someone's out for six months with a major injury, minimum, right? Right. Like they're not going to be able to fight again anytime soon, but they know, hey, we need to have this belt defended again and you didn't lose. So we're not taking the title off you. You're still the champion as long as you, we know you're going to be able to come back and defend. So in the meantime, we'll have an interim champion in MMA because then we'll have a contest in which we will have the undisputed champion because... Right. It'll be filled in the meantime, and someone else will fight. Cody didn't right. have a debilitating injury to right. warrant this happening. This is just stupid. Yeah, it's a bit absurd. And also, uh, like if the idea being once Cody comes back, they are no longer championed instantaneously, or is it like, well, we're gonna have them just fight each other to figure out who the real champion is? In which case you should have just made whatever the match was like a number one contender title match for, you know, his, his belt when he comes back, or you should have just been like, you didn't show up. So we're stripping you of the title. And now this person is the champion and you might get a rematch. Like it's the lack of it's wrestling and story. You can do whatever the fuck you want. So the fact that it's also, it was going to be a rematch between the two guys. So he didn't need to have a number one contendership for it because Sammy's already there. Right. It's it it's it just really hurts the head sometimes when you go, did you did you really think about this long term? Is it is it just simply because they were so desperate to not have that match? I'm sorry, that it was a is uh, fuck. That's what Tamina said. Um, <laughs> is it? It was it just because they wanted to have a championship match 
and they were so desperate to have a championship match, they didn't want to make it like, well, he couldn't show up, so this is a regular match, you guys. Well, the whole week was about championship matches because this it was Dynamite was on was on TBS the first show. We also crowned the new host champion, TBS champion, uh Jade Cargill. Right. Um, so she won and we had the world title match, and then we had Battle of the Belts, which was a part of the special. It was Saturday and right. the main one of the main matches was for the TNT championship. They could have just said, well, it's not being defended because Cody's not here. We're going to find out more about that later. Right. Here's the lineage. Here's a package. And all the other matches go longer. Whatever. I don't think anybody was ultimately going, well, if that's not defended, then Battle of the Belts is bullshit. Right. Right. So. Yeah. It's it's a all bit absurd. Yes. Wrestling is absurd. Uh, AEW. Uh, has Tony Schiavone for a little bit longer. <laughs> I, hope that's on- the, I hope that's the official press release. Hey, you guys, <laughs> just popping in here to say we got Schiavone for a little bit longer. And I hope it says L I L apostrophe B I T. A little bit longer. A little bit longer. We had the, uh, you know, the, the, the parking attendant um, can't find his keys. He has his ticket. But he can't find the keys, so he's going to be around for a little bit longer. I just want to officially say here, um, officially, that uh, I'm going to be on Pro Wrestling Pals keys a little bit longer. Oh, really? A little bit longer. Who made that, who made that call? Um, The dragon. Oh, okay. Shivani revealed on the latest What Happened When podcast that AEW picked up a two-year extension on his existing contract, keeping him... In the company through mid 2024. Out of all of the, you know, voices, uh, the commentators, the broadcast team specifically, who do you think is the most crucial to AEW? Out of all the commentators? Like, yeah. Who do you think is the most crucial? Is it JR? Is it Excalibur? Is it Giovanni? Is it fucking Taz? I guess it depends on perspective. Henry. I cuz yeah. I bet internally it's Excalibur because he's going to do every single thing you tell him. Right. He's going to say all the copy, he's going to say all the shit that's on being the elite. He's going to say all those things that it's like no one else is paying attention to, so he's going to tell you all that stuff. Right. So they probably say it's him. I'd say your best commentator, the the one who's most crucial for giving you the the best analysis showman whatever for for commentary sake i think it's taz yeah you think taz is the biggest asset well um, yeah because yeah. shivani just says yes to everything yeah i and i was gonna say i think we romanticize shivani and jr and I like Shivani a little bit better than JR, which I'm surprised at considering how much of a WWF guy I was um, through the Attitude Era and previously. But I think, you know, we've talked about it on this show. I think JR has kind of slipped a little bit on commentary. And I do think that like his best role is back doing interviews. I think Shivani is very much happy to be there. And it's not. It's it's not unenjoyable listening to him. I like it. He's fun. He's you know he's having a good time. I don't know that he's necessarily adding a ton to the product other than that classic voice. He's just got that yeah. voice. So when you tune, he's in, got a great broadcaster yeah, voice. Yeah. And when he goes after MJF, he's amazing. That, yeah, it's he, he's so fun. He's a little bit inconsistent though when it comes to stuff like that. But what do you mean, guy who doesn't watch the show? Well, I mean, I. When I watched it weekly, uh, he was the sort of dude where I feel like there are some people and it, and I don't blame him entirely. I think it might just be that like they haven't done a great job of fully communicating a story. And so there are some people where I feel like he's a little bit more lost on during their matches. Um, and I think that's when you'll notice he asks a lot of questions to Excalibur because he's like, I want to be involved. And he'll, mm-hmm. he'll throw questions to Excalibur and ask about this person. And then Excalibur will give him a bunch of information that he can't do anything with because... Excalibur gave it to him. Okay, I thought you meant on MJF. So I. Oh no 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 no! Like, no, I'm sorry. I meant like he's with that sort of performance that he tends to give with certain people. Like he's great with Sting, MJF, Darby. He's great. There's a lot of people who he's really good with. 
We had the people that he basically stories. has an on camera relationship with. Sure, sure. He he's consistent with those. So if it's the people who piss him off or wrong him or treat him, belittle him or anything like that, he's consistently like Adam Cole. It's like, oh, he's great. Right. Uh, we have we have problems. <laughs> right, 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 right. Well, I'm still happy for him though. I do think that it is nice having him there, and it does feel. I don't know. It feels culturally important for him. Like the fact that him and Jr. were there at the jump and it's like, yeah, it's nice. I like that they're Shivani at least is actually excited about something again right. and is back into wrestling and doing it, even though he probably likes a little bit more than Jr. does, even though he's very, he's made it very clear in the past on his podcast where he talks about like the shit he doesn't like, but he will say clearly on commentary like, wow, that was great. Look at that. He hides it better. Right, right. But there's plenty that he, it's like, it's not for him, but yeah. he knows I'm getting paid. I'll yeah. do this. That's the job. And then I'll walk away and go, what the fuck was that? <laughs> right. Right. And Jer will be more the grouch going like, he'll say it on air. Yeah, I get that. I agree. Uh, thanks to our discord for posting this one. I hadn't even seen it yet, but, uh, our discord, that's the place to be everybody. That's the place to hang out, chat wrestling and have news stories break that we can then talk about on the show. Former WWE superstar, Sonny is arrested charges of weapons, possession and making threats. Tammy Sitch known as Sonny during her WWE wrestling career was arrested uh, and charged with two counts of unlawfully possessing a weapon and one count of terroristic threats, according to court documents obtained by TMZ Sports. Sitch was arrested in New Jersey, but the nature of the alleged threats are not currently known, says TMZ. The weapons charge are uh, third degree, while the threats charge is fourth degree. They carry a maximum combined total prison sentence of 11 years if found guilty on all charges. Holy no shit. further information about the details leading up to arrest were publicly released. So let's bring it back. I think we're going to have to raise some money for Sunday. <laughs> this is, is there anybody more appropriately named than Tammy Sitch? Considering there's always a fucking situation happening. There's Angel always sunny. There's always a Tammy Sitch going down. This is unfortunate. Uh, and, um, I feel like Sonny has these brief, uh, like, hey, she's turning her life around moments. And when I say brief, I mean brief throughout the years. Uh, but it's, it's, I don't know, it's kind of a bummer. I don't know. I don't want to hate on nobody. I don't know what people's lives are like. I don't know the shit that they're going through in their mind, but it does seem like. Yeah, she's lost her husband. Second, yeah, the second you hear the word Tammy Sitch or you hear WWE's Sonny. You immediately go like, oh, fuck. Oh, what's no. The news? What happened? Like, and that sucks. I don't want to be that guy, but. It's, and it's not the same as, uh, you know, WWE Hall of Famer, superstar Billy Graham. You go, oh, God. Yeah. What's right. he's going to say? Of course. I mean, what? what I'm kind of curious about these terroristic threats. Yeah. What is that? What does it mean? Did she call the hotline and say some shit, Jake? And you're just not saying what it was? Um, no, I would have played that. Damn. But I mean, like, this is like what what constitutes terroristic threats? And does it publicly or to a person? Did she threaten a person? The fact that it's, the word terroristic is what is getting me because it has to be to the public, which means I was she, not aware of that word. She must have threatened the public good in some way, shape or form. I don't know how political is this she, is. I certainly don't follow any of that on her. I was going to ask, is she like an anti-vaxxer or an anti-masker? Cause she did. Well, that, I think it would be beyond that. If it's terroristic, it's, you know, I don't know. anti you know, the person in charge, you know, I, I would think it's, it's, it's bigger than, you know, going to Trader Joe's and saying something. It's like going to DC and storm and something. Well, but, but honestly, I do feel like even just posting publicly, like, you know, you guys are all idiots for getting your vaccinations, wearing masks, like even saying like, I'm going to go to the fucking Walmart and lick everything in today's climate, like with a literal pandemic nearing a million losses like that very much is taken seriously and is considered i think terroristic yeah if you're putting the also public like health on only fans and that's kind of hot you know <laughs> is that what your only fans have it is is it just you watch people lick shit at walmart yeah you got a weird ass kink don't kink shame here 
Tim Bemis says, probably just threatened to shoot up an Applebee's. Oh, poor Marky, poor Marky Extreme. Oh, no. <laughs> Tammy's and Applebee's. It's just a recurring theme. It's a story I don't want to follow up on, but I, I want to know. I mean, like this, is, she's going to end up in prison for whatever this is. I mean, it's, and again, she did it. Whatever it was, she did it, right? Like, this isn't, we're not being like, maybe they got it wrong. Maybe these charges are bullshit. I mean, don't get me wrong. Fucking believe I, I women. I think it's fair to say that she probably, it, it sounds like the weapons charge, that for sure is, she probably has the weapons. Right, right. And then the threats or anything else, I don't know. Because I don't know if they're written. I don't know if they're spoken. I don't know if they're recorded. Mm-hmm. Who knows about that? But the weapons charges is, generally pretty easy to go yeah they had guns yeah two, oh, two yeah, counts of it. unlawfully possessing a weapon is pretty straightforward i'm trying to read it one by one yeah one lawfully count, possess it one count of terroristic threats although now that i'm seeing now that i'm my brain is seeing it written together yeah. it might be like the terroristic threat might have to do with the unlawful possession of the weapon when do threats and weapons go hand in hand, Jake? Please. Oh, Gil says this is a safe space, Jake. It is, which is why I want to be able to say Sammy did it without fucking being no. judged. He's talking about licking shit at Walmart. No. Oh, God. Believe women unless they're Tammy Sitch. Look, her tongue is not a weapon. It's a healing tool. Do you remember how much you loved her when you were young? No, because I wasn't watching that because no. it was stupid. Oh, my God. Like, she was, I think she's a ton of, you know, late 30s, early 40s wrestling fans, first crushes, and just like, they, she was just the best. Absolutely the best. I would think a lot of teens as well. I think you're leaving out a lot of... I meant like today, yes, meaning people who are that age oh, today. Uh, I thought you just meant like... When she was around on TV, people that were 30 and 40 finally, years old. Finally got a crush for the first time. No, you idiot. I oh. mean, people today that are in their late 30s, early 40s. <laughs> that was really funny. Um, Yeah, she was really charming, very fun, good at what she did. She's Even, amazing. Oh, man. She popped up in a watch along not that weird ago, selling merch. Not that weird ago? That's what Demina said. Did I say not that weird ago? Oh boy, it's gonna be a long day, Palskis. I didn't. I only had a half a cup of coffee this morning, and you just drank more. Yeah. It's really so cold. now it's cold. You're a liar. I'm gonna ask Alexandra to make more. Um. She's anyways, uh, yeah. I mean, uh, we'll. I guess we'll follow this story closely, <laughs> Palski Nation. Yeah. Yeah, stay tuned to the Discord, everybody. But not too close. To get all the all your updates and and uh, her latest cameo rates to post bail. Gil- Gilbert does say she was the proto Trish Stratus. I think that's pretty fair to say. That's a good. I don't. I know because Trish was meant to wrestle, and Sunny was not. All right, I get what you're saying. Sunny was the personality. Sunny was the host. Sunny was the manager. Sunny was the all round like, hey. How do we make everyone just happy right now and excited and go like, hey, it's sunny. This is great. Right. Trish was the the devious, sexy manager and then turned wrestler. Like, right. sunny was an anomaly. Yeah. Yeah. Because it was also true. at the time of Sable. And then Sable was also meant to be the wrestler, right. yada, yada, yada. But sunny was just meant to be like, hosting what whatever it was what fucking watch live wire why sunny's on <laughs> right right great yeah she was she did literally everything for that company at some point it feels you know what she i'd say she's the prototype for what renee young was a without bit. yeah a le, like less sex appeal and because renee didn't play that up huge and they obviously did play that up with sunny but a lot of right. times it was also meant to like Hey, sure. In the '90s, if this is gonna bring in a lot of teens, great. But right. she was also meant to be able to talk to everybody and and chat and host and I do be think family though, friendly. I do think though that Sunny was more of a character. Uh, she was she leaned more wrestler performer than someone like Renee did. Where Renee was like, "I'm a broadcaster," 
And Sonny was like, here's my cousins, Chip and Dip, or whatever the fuck they were. Yeah. But then when we saw Renee doing whatever that first show was on the network, right? Like the WWE backstage. (laughs) No, yeah, yeah, sure. That that when we finally got to see more Renee right. being Renee and see that personality come out, that's I feel like we wouldn't have had that if not for a Sunny. Right, right. So it's not the best comparison, but that's the closest one that I can, I can come up Gil with. Gil says in the chat, uh, he's not sure Tris Trish. Ooh, that's what Tamina said. I'm not sure Trish was meant to wrestle when she formed TNA. I didn't even know she had anything to do with total nonstop action. No, these jokes are old. <laughs> I like that you did that to, oh, what a night. Mm, 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 mm. Something, something, Scots and Thunder. Dum, dum, dum. Nope. WWE's Corey Graves reportedly cleared to return to in ring action. I'm fucking stoked for this. I don't know that he's going to go ahead and do it, though. He has got a cush job behind the, to the desk. He's very good at what he does. I don't want to lose him because there are so few exceptional commentators right now working in WWE programming. But also, I love them as a wrestler. Um, I, I I don't know that the character, like he's going to be a completely different character if he comes back as a wrestler, even though he's going to be Corey Graves. His character on commentary is so drastic from the character he wrestled as. So if he mm-hmm. does start wrestling, it's going to be interesting seeing him have to wrestle as a new character for the first time. Well, even still, I think there's so many people that just don't know him as a wrestler. Yeah. Man. I think it's not that different that if Excalibur was cleared for in-ring action, it's like, right. huh? Right, right. Man. I, I didn't see him wrestle, no, and I yeah. I right, was still in and out of NXT at the time, and uh, by the time I heard about him, he was hurt. Right. I was like, oh, all right, we'll see yeah, for that. That the tag he was the tag title run was really good. And I, I love his finisher, the the submission of 13 step, which is like a inverted sharpshooter is real, real good. I, I mean, Who's his tag team partner? Um I'm struggling to remember because it was an it was the instance of like someone's injured. I want to say it was Pac. Or I'm sorry, Adrian Neville, and then replaced Adrian with Bo Dallas, maybe? I'm struggling Chad to remember. You put me on, Gable. It put me on the spot there. Um, but I mean, I, I really dug him as a wrestler and I'm happy for him if it's what he wants to do. But also, I mean, just because he's clear doesn't mean he should. Uh, people in the chat are, are saying, oh, he's going to be in the, the Rumble. He's going to be in the Rumble. He's going to be in the Rumble. So even if he only gets a moment, then like I'm happy for him. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I I never understand the appeal of having someone come back in a rumble and then being thrown 10 feet (laughs) to the ground to go, oh, they're in. I don't want them to win because that fuck up mania. (laughs) But, oh, yeah, this is going to be so exciting to see him get thrown out. Yeah, the speculation's there. The Also, the speculation and the jokes are being made of, well, if AEW's got CM Punk, what's the closest looking thing we've got to it? Hey, Corey Graves. Yeah. And to i don't know if they're intending to fool people or somebody in the discord if you're in the chat right now and you know it might have been gilbert it seems like a gilbert joke but if not i apologize whoever had said it somebody said i can't wait for vince to play with his new toy cg punk <laughs> Corey gray was punk cg punk and i was like yeah that's that's very fitting mm-hmm. uh i i hope he wants to do it i don't know why when he's so good at commentary what there is to necessarily prove i know i know you you get in it for a reason you know you want to be the wrestler you want to do that but you're you're not in the position of like a byron saxton right where fans perception is oh man you just you suck right (laughs) you're just you're just that other guy You're, you're just doing that role you got kicked in the nuts by stone cold a bunch of times right uh where you know if you're Brian Saxon, you go, look, I fill a role. I do the job just fine. Everybody's happy with what I do. I create a balance. You know, I I, I do a, a lot of things that make a lot of things work. Right. Well, you may not like the character or it's not enough for you. I'm happy. Right. But Byron may go, well, shit, I still wanted to wrestle. Yeah. Yeah. And I could show everyone, fuck you. I know how to do this. But Graves has just carved out a whole new path. 
It is interesting. I feel like I put Graves and Matt Stryker kind of in similar scenarios with the exception of Stryker. I don't think got injured to the point where he just went like, you know, I'm good at this thing and they keep asking me to do it and I'm not hurt all the time. <laughs> like, uh, and mm-hmm. I wonder, you also don't wonder if the love, the love changes. I mean, you know, you and I have talked about this when it comes to just career and stuff like that, where it's like the thing you wanted 10 years ago might not be the thing you want today. It might be a version of that. I mean, I, I can think about that in my own career where it's like 10, 10 years ago, like all I wanted to be was a movie star. You know what I mean? And now I'm just like, Oh God, that seems like so much fucking work. Like now I just want to like, you know, make movies with my friends and have my bills paid, you know, like your, your, your goals change. And I feel like after sitting at the desk for so long, his, his goals might've changed. His dreams might've changed. Also, you know, he, he might be at a point where he's like, well, I'm starting to want to, I want to start a family or I want to do this. And although God, do we have enough? I was going to say, do we have enough like wrestling couples in fucking WWE? Or yeah, wrestling. is that what he's trying to cash in on? Is he seeing Miz and Marie's do shit with Edge? And, yep. He's and, like, I uh, want to fight Edge and, and uh, Beth. Yeah, and then Carmon's going, oh, great. Now I have to explain who you are? Ugh. Um, G- Gilbert Short in the chat. Um, uh, I'm going to give it some preface to the line. I'm going to say, if what if Corey enters the Rumble, but then uh, Byron enters and tosses him out of it just so Byron can hold that over him forever on commentary. Uh, that'd that would be pretty great. That would be the best case scenario. Or, or does something where he costs it him the thing. So if he's, right. if it's a thing like he's taking off the jacket, doing it, going in the ring, taking off the stuff. It's like, I, Byron help, help. And right. then Byron takes off the headset, runs over and like pulls, takes him. his jacket and then pulls him up and over. It's like, what'd you do? Yeah, The Hogan, the Hogan Sid rumble where he just pulls him over the top rope. It's like, what the mm-hmm. fuck? Yeah. Who's that? Is it my one shot? Sorry. Um, yeah. Tim Bemis in the chat says, put Graves in the Lawler role when he can get in and fight when it means something. I think it's slightly different in that. Like Lawler is like the old veteran the institution road. Yeah, exactly. So it doesn't mean as much when, Graves just goes, I'm getting involved. It's like, okay. Yeah, and he, he's the gatekeeper too. Right. I mean, you could always, you saw the new upcoming people at a certain point, they would just immediately be in a feud with Lawler. And I'm sure it's like, right. so yeah, kids fine. Yeah. Kids sound and this, that, and he's right. cool to work with, but I do keep, like the idea. On. I do like the idea that he's cleared. And I also hope he stays a commentator. Cause I like him in that position. He's one of my favorite things about the WWE commentary teams, plural. I think he's the only thing I can really stand at this point. Yeah. So anytime I've turned it on and I hear a McAfee or something else, I'm like, ah, I can't do it. Yeah. So we'll see about that, but that's not the only commentator news. Former WWE announcer, Tom Phillips, AKA the face fucker debuts at impact hard to kill as the new play by play announcer. The news was first revealed by Renee Paquette as she announced that Phillips now going by his real name, and it's not Facefucker, to my shock, Tom Hannafan will be on you. the podcast to discuss the news. So, uh, yeah, strike her out. Hannafan in. Say the last name one more time. Hannafan. Oh, boy, that's what Tamina said. <laughs> H-A-N-N-I-F-A-N. Um, this is, now, he's your favorite commentator of all time, right? He's my favorite DMer on Twitter of all time. You wait, because the way he DMs you? No, he's never offered to face fuck me. Um, I mean, I'm happy for people that have work in wrestling. So because of that, great for him. Yeah. Now, what happens to Stryker, though? Royal Rumble. <laughs> <laughs> there, for the men's rumble, there has to be so much explanation. It's not a, it's now, not who a are fucking these? Nash or a Scott Hall or any of these big names come back where everybody goes, we know who they are and what they do. Okay. So I don't know if you saw like for like two years, this dude was a teacher and then he came out with Big Daddy V for a while. And uh, t- t- look, it's Matt Strike. He's, uh, he's, he's already thrown Liter- out. What, what is Literally, it's 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 the actual commentary is going to sound like an episode of me, you and 30 other men where I'm just like rambling, attempting to explain 10 years of story to Alexandra to just say like, he's a garbage man. The bit is he's a garbage man. That's all you need to know. Mm-hmm. 
Oh my gosh. Uh, Zach Ayafuso, a former PWP champ, Zach Ayafuso in the chat says, wow, I didn't know it was released. When was that? <laughs> oh, you got to. You can't keep track of these things. You got to love many. it. You love to see it. Uh, and then uh, Ricky Morton announces a Rock and Roll Express farewell tour. Morton says he wants to focus on his son, who I don't know is probably like sixty five years old. I was say, no is this is this, is his son? Oh my gosh! He wants Never to mind. focus on his own son's retirement. Yeah, I was gonna say something really mean. I was like, don't be mean. And uh, behind the scenes work in pro wrestling, which you know. Hey, he's he's calling it, and he's calling it when he's calling it. So uh, I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, uh, I but mean, it won't last. It's a surprise that anybody says this is the farewell because, as according to Scott Narver, nobody retires in wrestling. Yeah, and we'll get to that soon but, too. I thought you were going to say it. I gave you the moment. I was like, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this thing according to Scott Narver, and then you were going to say it, and it was going to be really cute. And nobody retires in pro wrestling. We were going to be all in sync, but never mind. Nobody, nobody, nobody. Well, I was looking at stuff. I can't always look at the camera because, you know. I get it. Uh, so it's uh, they, they've announced dates. of They're going to do a lot of stuff coming up. And, and they've been welcomed in all the promotions, mostly all the promotions. And, right. you know, I think, I think it's cool. So a bunch of fans will get to know and get a chance to go try and see them as much as possible. Um, and with that, uh, GCW has announced... <laughs> Uh, one farewell. So we're, we're going to see Matt Cardona, the, su- the potential super spreader versus Ricky Morton at their upcoming show in the Chicago area. Uh, the, the, the GCW show that uh, is on a Saturday, January 15th. That's getting a lot of buzz. Uh, that is one of the matches now announced. People already don't like him. If he accidentally kills Ricky Morton, do you have any idea? <laughs> How good of a wrestling heel he would have uh, ahead of him? How good of a career? Um, what you say to potential super spreader? There's a lot of rumor going around that his wedding. Uh, a lot of people got COVID from it. Got it. I don't. No, no, I, don't mean, no, I didn't get I it. To deep dive. I mean, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Uh, that's another Rumors, show. Speculations. But Cody recently had to step away, and who knows what else? Who knows? Keep your hands off the action figures. Keep your hands off the action figures. Wipe them down, people. Like, I'm going to wipe my glasses down right now. So this uh, GCW show on on, uh, the 15th, which is coming up here, there's a number of matches um, that is happening. So let me me go down the card for you, because I swear GCW just came out of nowhere of of all the hype and everything. And it will be traditional pay-per-view. As well, but here's the card: ROH World Championship match, Jonathan Gresham versus Two Cold Scorpio. So, already like what? Right. Uh, disputed ROH title, Bandito versus Blake Christian, Matt Cardona versus Ricky Morton, GCW World Tag Team Championship match, Jay Briscoe and Mark Briscoe versus John Wayne Murdoch and Reed Bentley. Hmm. Ali Catch versus Kylie Ray, PCO versus AJ Gray, and I love how they put this one. Jeff Jarrett appears. <laughs> Je- isn't that like uh, the old Pokemon N sixty four game? Like a Jeff Jarrett appears. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I don't step. I think the only name on there that I've literally I'm I've zero familiarity with is the PCO's opponent. Who is PCO fighting? Let me see. Again. Gray, something gray. Is that what you said? AJ Gray. AJ Gray. Who's AJ Gray? With an E or an A? A. I was not familiar with Ali Catch. AJ Gray. Yeah, I don't know who this person is, but all right. I can't wait for Jeff Jarrett's magic act. That's going to be really great. Jeff Jarrett appears. <laughs> and I think there's more being announced. I, 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 I can't I, imagine a this crazy hardcore independent company putting on a pay-per-view show with only three, four, five, six matches. Right. No, I do truly hope that at some point they just say, ladies and gentlemen, WWE hall of famer, Jeff Jarrett. And then he just 
opens the curtain, doesn't come out, just opens it a little bit. Like, see, you can see him and he just waves and then he just closes the curtain right back up. <laughs> Jeff Jarrett has appeared. And Joe, he, his phone goes off and he goes, it's Karen. <laughs> I got to I got to I got to take this. I got to take this. Does Jarrett, does he take your calls or does he just send those right to voicemail? I know he's not a fan of yours. Uh, who is? <laughs> Good point. Make sure if you enjoy the show, or support the show by becoming a pro wrestling Patreon Palski. PWPalskis.com. Click that Patreon link. If we had a reverse hotline at which I could call our listeners, <laughs> they would all go straight to fucking voicemail. Oh, I Every like that idea. One. Leave your phone numbers in the Discord and Scott will, <laughs> Scott will call you and leave an angry voicemail. Why you don't pick up? I know you program my number. Uh, here we go again. Um, John Cena doesn't know if he'll be able to appear at WWE WrestleMania 38. <gasps> Despite he- that, Cena said he loves WWE and isn't done with pro wrestling by a long shot. But during an appearance on the Ellen DeGeneres show, John Cena was asked if he'll be returning to this year's WrestleMania. Quote, WrestleMania is usually in the cusp of late March, early April. I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it this year. That's a good conundrum to have because there's a lot of good opportunities coming up, which I would love to take. And if all those things line up, I don't know if I'll be able to make WrestleMania. But I will tell you and everybody out there watching, I'm not done with WWE by a long shot. That's my home. I love it. I was able to go back during the summer for a few months and entertain audiences when they welcomed audiences back to arenas. So... I've far from had my last performance. Um, yeah, cool. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so, so has The Rock. Like, this is one of those instances where it's like, oh, man, I'm not going to be able to make that thing you shouldn't have expected me for. Oh, man, if only there was some way of organizing dates beforehand and knowing about commitments. I, I swear to you, I'm not taking monumental opportunities that give me a lot more exposure than WWE and money. And I get to meet other cool buff people and egomaniacs that are not in wrestling. I no, no, no. I could, I could have played this out, but I just, I can't, I can't plan it out. You know what happened? He actually was like, I'm sh- I will come to WrestleMania if you want Vince, but I'm wearing the peacemaker outfit. And he was like, I don't know what that is. Why is there a toilet on your head? Yeah, I don't. What do you think? You think he's going and he's just trying to. This seems a little bit. It, this seems like wait, wait, who who reported this again? What was the interview? Ellen DeGeneres. Um, it, I guess wrestling zone aficionado. Con, yeah, I guess context is a lot. If it seems like the sort of thing that came up naturally because he's a wrestler and she just said, like, are you going to wrestle again? Uh, but if it seemed like it was a thing on her card that they talked about in the pre-interview of mm-hmm. what you're going to talk about. Then, then it's a misdirection. If it comes up naturally, I feel like, yeah, he's probably being honest. Like I couldn't make it work, unfortunately. But if it's like, Hey, make sure you ask me about wrestling. So I tell them I'm not going to be there. Cause you know, talk shows, all that shit's very, very meticulously planned at a time. And if it's like, ask me a question just so that I could give you bad news. Seems like a misdirect. Oh, seems like wrestling misdirection. So seems like the kind of mi- match between John Cena and Happy Corbin. Seems like the kind of misdirection you'll see at Jeff Jarrett's Magic Act at GCW. Ah, <laughs> uh, my lovely assistant Cody Angle is here. Yes, uh, uh, and uh, the fourth edition of the Chris Jericho Rock and Wrestling Rager at Sea Cruise has been postponed. Oh no! Until twenty twenty three. Too bad. According to a statement on the cruise's website, the decision to postpone from March 2022 to February 2023 came after soliciting feedback and conducting research. Hmm. In addition to the new dates, the cruise will have a new destination as well. Instead of sailing from Miami, Florida to Nassau, Bahamas, the cruise will now depart Miami and end up uh, at Great Stirrup K. Bahamas, including a stop at a private island 
I love that in their announcement, they had to throw in, I've done my own research. <laughs> like a fucking ant on Facebook. We, I, I opened up Facebook and I saw oh my God. that I can buy shrimp somewhere else cheaper. So I'm not going on a cruise. Oh my God. That's absolutely hilarious. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I'm of the mindset of maybe we shouldn't just be on cruises at all. So this is great news because I don't want fellow wrestling fans to get sick and or die or kill their loved ones. So. Well, then what else are you supposed to do on a cruise ship? Have, did you see? Uh, oh, I don't think we've talked about this last week. I think that you don't have the Paramount Plus edge. I but do I, not. Uh, Reno 911 the hunt for QAnon, the new, new, new Reno number one movie. I imagine that because the whole thing is they go on a QAnon cruise to try to find Q, right? They go uh-huh. undercover. That's the premise of the movie. I, I can imagine the Jericho cruise being a lot similar to that cruise <laughs> that they depicted in that movie. I, yeah, I, I mean, I would say you got to pay me to get me back on a cruise ship. Yeah, uh, sure. Of course. Would you ever go on a Chris Jericho cruise if all was well, COVID's fine, there's nothing, none of that stuff? Just- I, I'm i a self-hating wrestling fan. I feel like I would not enjoy that crowd. You get to share a cabin with Corey Graves. <gasps> CG Punk? Um, CG Punk. By the way, it was Gil. He said in the chat, that was me. I did say that, so I got it right. Um, Listen. I only if I didn't have to worry about Carmella ruining things and getting in the way. You wouldn't because she's not allowed to go. Yeah. No, I wouldn't. I, I don't. I don't know. I, I I think I'm in your thing where you'd have to pay me to go. If you were like, hey, they're looking for broadcasters or, or which is like not a thing I'm interested in doing for a living anyway. I do this podcast because I like talking about wrestling with my friend Scott Narver. I have no interest in being a wrestling journalist. Um, so I don't even know if that would necessarily get me on there, but it would have to have a gig of some sort. If they're like, hey, we're going to fucking, you know, we're, we're going to shoot the whole thing and we're going to have you do live broadcast stuff or have you direct some shit and we're going to give you lots of money. Then I'd be like, all right, maybe I'll go. But what if it what if it was a paid gig and the gig was reasonable? I don't know the rates and all that stuff, but the the you know they're they're covering everything like the cruise is paid for, you know, and then you get you what your job is is you are taking eight by tens like you're doing a photo doing shoot photos. for wrestlers. Um, I that would actually probably be best case scenario because as my um you know, history in any sort of, uh, you know, entertainment industry work would tell you there's nothing worse than talking to people. (laughs) And when you get to be a photog and just keep to yourself and be a fly on the wall and just capture shit and you don't actually have to communicate really with anybody, that's best case scenario. That is just ultimate, like, Headphones on, just like your camera, you're in your space. You don't worry about Maybe shit. Maybe you got to evoke it out of them. No, I don't. You are the Vince McMahon to bring out their inner He's characters to capture them. Puke. Um, no. Yeah, they're on a cruise ship. It's bound to happen. <laughs> no. Oh, his whole gimmick is just taken every single day on that ship. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it would take a lot of money to get me on that son of a bitch. And finally, in our news, unless we got to dip into some of the reserve, it was no, announced this that is, this is the this is the headliner for this week. Okay, it was announced that Mickey James will be returning to WWE to take part in this year's Women's Royal Rumble match. The announcement came with the acknowledgement that James is the current Impact Wrestling Knockouts champion. It was mentioned by Pat McAfee on commentary, and WWE also referred to James as the Impact knockouts champion on social media now i had to look this up afterwards because i thought to myself oh was this a like she made an appearance she came out but no they literally were just like hey everybody mickey james is gonna be at the rumble and they showed a picture of her in a wwe ring (laughs) um but i did see that there were and this is just like weird insider smarky bullshit but there was like sources that got a hold of the actual script and apparently it had like impact knockouts champion in 
parentheticals with question marks in them because they mm-hmm. didn't confirm up until the last minute whether they were going to acknowledge that for some reason. Like there's all of this like rumor about like we didn't know what, what they were going to say, which is just absurd. Uh, at the end of the day, I'm I'm all for this. I think you and I have talked about this a lot. Like the more people can just go and wrestle in different places and have different matches with different people, the better. But also, it's like how many women did they just fire in the past two years that Mickey are all James. like, yeah, I, I mean, like, uh, it's just a, kind of funny to me that it's like, oh, shit, we have to get 30, 30 female employees to wrestle in this event. Oh, crap. I can come up with six. We have six in the locker room. What about that other show with all the crazy colors? What do you mean we let all them go to? What I enjoy is WWE wanting people to come wrestle for them to truly be independent contractors. Yeah. Yeah. But no one on their roster who work for them are allowed to be the actual independent contractors that they are and wrestle anywhere else. That's what I enjoy. It's a real do as I say, not as I do situation. Yeah. Do me. Um, but this is fun. I like it. If here's the question. One, is she still the impact knockout champion come rumble? Uh, I believe she is because her no... to kill happened and I don't think she lost it. Okay, great. So, so chances are she's not going to lose it at a TV taping. That's probably right, this week. Right. Okay. So uh, will she bring it out there? No, because we'll, 75% of the time NXT champions don't bring their shit out. Right. And I, I was going to say like even their own belts don't tend to get brought out. Um. So yeah, not likely she's going to bring Especially it out. Especially for a rumble. Cause you, whatever you're coming out with, like you immediately right. ditch it and right. then run. Sure. Um, but I mean, this is, you know, this opens up a lot of uh, speculation. You know, we talk about the forbidden door, um, and, uh, WWE opening this up to have Mickey come through and acknowledging that she's the current impact knockout champion is, is a big deal, but it's, let me ask you this. Is it too little too late at this point or is any of it exciting to you? I I don't know. Immediately I go like, oh, Mickey, I'm sure that paycheck was good, but come on. Like, I hope you get to say something. I'm I'm sure that it was, you know, tied to that individual. I think it was Mark Carano was his name. Right. Where it's, it's more based around that one person in the company. And, you know, we still feel as a collective like, hey, they 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 fucked you. And now we're we're supporting you and what you want to do. I'll go back. That's cool. How much are you going to pay me? I'll go. Right. Oh, oh, all right. Well, there's that. And then just everybody else that is, is coming out of the woodwork for it. Cause this is, this is the, uh, women's event of no, 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 no. I, I, I said I was retired, but that doesn't include rumbles. <laughs> We're right. not talking about rumbles. Rumbles are That's- I'm retired from wrestling matches in which you must pin or submit an opponent. It gets yeah. like real specific. Cause I mean, we got Summer Ray, Michelle McCool, Bree and Nikki Bella, uh, Kelly Kelly, and Lita. Lita's Lita's gonna be the the one out of this that's like the ah, I'm back again. Is Lita it's my forty-fifth rumble appearance? I'm here. Is Lita the Jerry Lawler of the women's division? Well, Lawler never retired. Right. Okay. And Lita did officially quote retire years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. And has c- c- come back a number of times now. Sure. And is is like, uh, yep, I know my next fuck. What are, I got to get one more paycheck being in that rumble? Do you think? Trish, do you think that they? I think Trish is at least going to hold out for longer. Right. Post that SummerSlam match, and be like, yeah. no, no, no. I said I was done. Yeah, this was so. Farewell. Unless you really find a spot where you are so desperate, you're going to throw me so much cash that I can't deny it. Because she's going to get a WrestleMania match out of it. Like she'll win the fucking thing. Right. She's not going to do it. Now, the one thing that makes this match very interesting, though, on top of this, that we can talk about a little bit. Do you know what Charlotte Flair did? No. Fill me in on the doings of the Flair. 
So the doings of the flare is she's the uh, champion. Yep. That's what Tamina said. So she has said that she is also going in the rumble. Okay. And that when she wins, she will choose her own opponent at WrestleMania. So she is going to enter as champion, win as champion, and then pick her challenger. Mm hmm. I mean, Which I think is fascinating. That is kind of a fun twist on the Rumble. I can see a lot of the diehards being upset with the like sanctity of the story of the Rumble. I could see it being like, well, that's not what the Rumble's about. It's about like finding this and a challenger. It's sort of, I remember when. But it's changed. It's also and, been for the title at times. Of course. Um, I, I was just going to. Uh, Go back to when uh, Brock kind of controlled the Rumble that first half of the year that uh, that uh, Drew won. And uh, wait, was it the Drew one? Which was the one that did Drew win that one? Which the one where Brock one? where Brock like was in control yes. for that was one that Drew. Okay, I for a, for a minute I was like, wait a minute, did Edge win that? Now I'm all confused. But anyways, so um. I was. I remember the beginning of that rumble. I, I think it was even in our Discord. Uh, there was a lot of like, this isn't a rumble. Like, this doesn't feel like the rumble. And we only get it once a year. Kind of twice a twice. year. Twice a year. Um, but because of that, it doesn't feel, uh, you know, it, it, it kind of ruins what the rumble is. And then thinking to myself like, yeah, but the rumbles are going to always, they're going to be indefinite. I want to see a different story told every now and then because... Mm-hmm. At some point, and trust me, I have watched tons of them back to back with Alexandra. And at some point, they get kind of repetitive. They all kind of are the same. And so, uh, anytime you throw a little something in there that's like, there's a little twist on this year's Rumble, I'm kind of always for it. I don't mind a gimmick Rumble for a year. Uh, and this, uh, the idea of her entering, or I mean, the thing is that if she's a heel, the real story should be I'm entering as champion. And when I win, I'm taking WrestleMania off. That should have been the story. True. Oh, she could also fight a little person version of anybody. So that, you know, that could be that. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. I, I think that's the only part of this that, like I said, with special attractions or people from outside or the retirees, there is no precedent of them winning. Right. So the expectation of, like, hey, Lita's coming back. And Mickey James, Impact Knockouts champion. She's coming in. She's not going to win. Like, there's no... The only yeah. way that you think they're going to win is in your rumble pool when you pick the number and you go, I got number 12. Who's number 12? Who's this? That's Mickey James. Who the fuck is that? She's an Impact right. Knockouts champion. Well, she's going to win, right? Right. No, dude, she's not going to win. Ah, she's going to win. I got number shit. 12 here. Ah, shit. She got thrown out. I thought she was going to win. Um, So that actually brings me to the treatment of those who come through the forbidden door. Uh, do you think that she is brought into the company and then just there to be fodder for a Bianca Belair or a, a you know, Tamina. a, 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 a Tamina? Um, She's announced. She's yeah. smiling in the, f- in the photo, you know, or do you think that they, you know, make it like, well, this is kind of a big deal. So let's draw a spotlight on how cool this is and put her in the final four or at least or something to that extent. No. No, you think she doesn't even make it to the final four. When did they do this with Mickey James previously? And all the times that they've could have done this when she was at that status and people wanted it and loved it. Like they're not on the pulse of what people think and yeah, what they're right. clamoring for right. at all. That has also been the case. They are very good at dictating what they want you to be into. And at times they certainly hit it right on the head. They right. they nail it with like, hey, Roman and Paul Heyman and and the Usos. Right. You're into this. Yeah, we fucking are. This is great. And other times when they go, you are going to be into Dewdrop versus Becky Lynch at the Royal Rumble. Right. Mm, I will be, but not for the reasons you're telling me to. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh man. It's interesting. I uh I look And also the Forbidden Door thing, it's it's you know, that's certainly exaggerated for one person so far. Right. Well we've only had we are going to talk all about uh, the rumors regarding the Forbidden Door on the Men's Rubble <gasps> next week. Um, 
So that is what we are chatting about next week because there has been a little rumor going around that the WWE is looking for a high profile entrant into the men's rumble. So we'll talk all about that next week, but uh, they already have Omos. <laughs> Did you see Omos get caught on camera asking the ref what to do? Fucking everybody. Oh, like it's so funny. Watch a mania showed uh, Bobby Lashley and MVP not knowing what was going on. Well, this was different. This was literally the camera is as close as our individual cameras are to us directly on us. And he looks at the ref and goes, should I do the height thing? And the ref goes, yeah. And he goes, and he raises his arm up like, I'm really tall and you're a really little person I'm fighting. It was pretty hilarious. Anyways, um, that'll do it for this week's live stream. Before we go, I uh, want to say thanks to everyone who tuned in. And of course, to our current PWP world champ, Andrea Beeler, a.k.a. Pollen Hate. Current PWP world champ will defend her title the first week in February uh, against maybe you if you become a championship Palski over at pwpalskis.com and click on that Patreon link. Becoming a Palski is the best way to support the show. Uh, there are so much fun things to get involved with there. You can uh, join in the live stream uh, as we do these every other week. You can watch all of the videos that exist from the entire catalog that's on there. You get your watch along Wednesdays. You get a ton of original series like the original encyclopedia, the rumor mill, the hair hall of fame, my personal favorite. So much fun stuff over there on the Patreon. Um, And uh, so we appreciate those of you uh, who are partaking in that, but we're going to go take a hotline call or two. Uh, So for now, let's say goodbye to the live stream, Scott. Bye. 747-666-5606 747-666-5606 That is the number to the Pro Wrestling Palski's hotline. You can also send a voice memo to hotline at pwpalskis.com Scott, do you want to see uh, what hotline calls we got? Yes! Hey guys, it's Johan Pena. Um, I just wanted to ask everyone, how do you feel about the news that Mickey James is going to be in the Women's Royal Rumble. How do you guys feel about other companies potentially uh, being represented in the Rumble? And who do you guys think uh, may show up in the Men's Rumble? There's a rumor going out there that WWE and AEW are in negotiations for the Rumble. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. Johan Pena, always great to hear from you. Thanks for your hotline call. Uh, Yes, this is actually, as I said, what we're going to be talking about all next week is that rumor about WWE in uh, cahoots trying to get someone through that forbidden door from uh, potentially AEW for the Rumble and maybe other companies. But currently, uh, I think it's just a forbidden window. It's it's like a uh, saloon door at best. A forbidden sunroof. Um, um, but he did ask about maybe other people who may come through. And although we're going to talk all about the men's next week, maybe a couple other ladies who, is there any other ladies? Yeah. We've only got like 12 to 15 ish ladies so far. Any other forbidden door ladies? Yeah. Cause you have to have some surprises, right? And somebody, somebody that goes, Oh, them. So if all the other ladies actually stay retired that were of WWE fame, right? Who's someone that's currently out and about working in other places? They go, let's get her. Um, I think that they're recently released from AEW. Uh, Big Swole would be a fun person to throw in there. You do just because just because they were just let go, and it's one of those instances where it's like, is she working for WWE or not? Like, the speculation would be fun, where it's like, no, we could just have a random person show up once and then go away. <laughs> now, are you affected at all by Tony Khan publicly saying, I didn't think her wrestling was good enough to resign her? I'm not going to lie. I actually do. That did make me like her a little bit more. <laughs> just because, like, I you like don't get me wrong the WWE is cold and heartless but like at least you get good luck in your future endeavors you don't get they were shit well there's also the work to watch too so I don't know I feel also that's the first lady to then walk through those doors as big 
Mm, I don't know. Mm. There's only been 78,000 of those that were men. So, um, who, who do you have for women who may be out and about there who you'd love to see? I know one who I'd love to see, and I feel like it's just an easy answer. All right, go for um, it. Marie Canellis. Yeah, Marie Canellis would be the best. She has she has a home in WWE. She would have a great welcoming. Um, she's doing great, you know, on her own. I, I do think it would be, that would be a nice one. Um, uh, I'm going to go Thunder Rosa as well. Oh. Uh, I like, I, I would like a little... Uh, and now, of course, I'm probably not up to speed. Who is the current NWA Women's Champion? Is that Camille? Um, Kim, oh, okay, right, right, right. Um, yeah, I don't know that Camille would be the one she, I would go with, but oh, she be she'd be absolutely one I, I go with. She's amazing. Yeah, I I just kind of want to see the the crowd the, would be taken aback real quick. Yeah, I I kind of do want to see the NWO. I'm sorry, NWO? the NWA, the NWA get some some representation in the Rumble. But I know who I would pick, and I Go think they're it. currently a free agent. Who? And they could use the money. Sunny! Oh, money for Sunny. That's if she can make bail. Well, what better way than to do a work release program? She works there, gets released. Do you know who should, uh, who should accompany her to the ring? No. The Usos, because they run the Uso Penitentiary. Oh, I thought of something way darker, but yes. Hey, pal, excuse the you your favorite chair from the six. Rory, I just wanted to wish you guys a happy new year. And what did you, what did you guys think of New Year's Evil and the releases that had been happening? Because I woke up to a few of the releases that have been happening. So, your thoughts. Love you guys. Talk to you soon. Bye. Rory, the chick from the six. Been a long time since we've heard from Rory. Thank you so much for your call. Uh, it sounds like maybe taking a break from cartoons in the background <laughs> to leave this voicemail. Never take a break from cartoons. Actually, she wasn't taking a break because we heard them. I like cartoons. Um, me too. Um, asking about uh, New Year's Evil, or as Scott likes to call it, New Day's Evil. Uh, did not. Some point it will be. Uh, did not. I did not catch it. Nor did I, but I saw the you know the fallout of what happened with yep. Champa and Breaker, which was the big news of that. So, yeah, I am worried because she also asked about releases. I'm worried for Champa because yep. now that he's not the champ, uh, all their God, how many champs is it? Uh, uh I'm trying to go backwards. So, uh, Smojo released. Okay. He was a champ before Champa. Keith Lee, and then Keith Lee. Karen Cross. Karen Cross. Adam uh, Cole. Who was the champ before that? Oh, uh, Cole. Okay. Oh, I don't. I don't know. Who's, I think it might have been Cole. I don't know who Cross beat. Oh, Cross beat maybe to Finn Balor. I think. Okay, he still works there. Yeah, so I can't, Finn. I can't remember. But because there were so many people definitely that just during the up. pandemic. Right. Yeah. Sure. So a ton of the NXT champions are yeah. gone from the company. Not to mention some of the mid card champions as well. Like North American champions and cruiserweight champions and almost people, almost everybody, they put a very fancy cummerbund on works somewhere else now. And even the cruiserweight championship. Yeah. They, they let the cruiserweight been, championship go. Thank you. Well, best in your future suspenders. <laughs> Cause they're going to make suspenders. Oh, that's a shirt. Um, thank I, you so it much. It sounds for like it was. Oh, okay. Oh, would you have more to add? Well, I was just going to say, like, it sounds like it was not the best event for black and gold fans with the yeah. also with that kick from Braun Breaker to the to the old logo. Did you see right, that? Right. Yeah. Right, yep. 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 Yeah. Bunch of people like, hey, leave that logo alone. Yeah, it's it is sad uh, as a black and gold fan. Uh, it's real sad. Uh, they have AJ Styles in NXT now trying to give it a rub down there and trying to get people interested. Apparently, that was supposed to be Jeff Hardy's spot. The rumor is that Jeff Hardy was supposed to be going and doing a bunch of work in NXT to try to bring some eyes to it before he was let go. Um, and so they sent AJ down, and now AJ is like doing some stuff with some of the new kids as well as uh, LA Knight. I don't know. It's not. It doesn't appeal to me at the current moment, unfortunately. Ditto. Um, well, again, thanks to those who called. Once again, 
Um, leave those voicemails any time of the day or night. Uh, make sure you're following us on social media at PW Palskis across the board and check out the shop at pwpalskis.com. There you can find the shop where you can snag some sweet merchandise like t-shirts, mugs, and masks. You can also click the Discord link and uh, join the Discord community. It is a ton of fun. It's completely free. It has nothing to do with the Patreon. It's uh, its own separate entity that's completely free to anybody and everybody who just likes hanging out and talking shit with friends. Um, I'm sure we're going to be on there watching the Rumble together, and that'll be a blast. Um, so again, all of that stuff you can find at pwpalskis.com. But I think it's time to thank our current Patreon Palskis. Isn't that right, Scott? It is right, and it's the only place where you can get a retribution name because WWE don't give one anymore, and we give them out plenty. So thank you to all of our current Patreon Palskis, AJ0314, a.k.a. Binary, Alex Pierce, a.k.a. Figs, Alice Raider, a.k.a. Invasion, Andrew Beeler, a.k.a. Pollinate, a.k.a. Current PWP Champion, Brad from Tennessee, a.k.a. Dry Rub, Brian Holloway, a.k.a. Thunder Void, Gilbert Short, a.k.a. Goliathon, Mass Llama, a.k.a. Spitz, Michael Beltran, a.k.a. Limestone, Miguel Diaz, a.k.a. Bipod, One and Only Nuggets, a.k.a. Double Dip, Pete Garit, a.k.a. Rhymes, Tim Bemis, a.k.a. War Trek, Tim Redbeard, a.k.a. Blood Fuzz, Tina Keys, a.k.a. Lockup, Tom Hader, a.k.a. Cupid, Tony Griggs, a.k.a. Big Griggs, and Zach Ayafuso, aka Fusebox. Uh, thank you to each and every one of you for your continued support. And of course, Andrea Beeler, our current PWP World Heavyweight Champion. Uh, we appreciate having you, and uh, hopefully, your reign continues. And we have our first ever back to back. We'll see. Um, you know, uh, you never know how it's going to unfold. Mickey James might get it. It's true. Um, but if you want to challenge Andrew Beeler, a.k.a. Pollinate, you got to become a championship Palski. Um, thank you guys so much. Uh, please follow me on social media at Jake Lloyd Bacon. Follow Scott Narver at Scott Narver. Um, you know where to find all the other fun stuff like On Your Mark, the number one wrestling comedy show and podcast. Find it on YouTube as well as on Dragon Wagon Radio. You can also find me, you, and 30 other men. It's rumble season. You can hear my much better half, Alexandra, and I sit down and watch a ton of rumbles, and it's just ridiculous goodness. Binge them. All that stuff you can find at dragonwagonradio.com. Uh, once again, thanks for listening. It is always a blast hanging out with you, the Pro Wrestling Palskis. In the mid-1960s, the world's smartest TV producers brought together four young musicians to create a TV show that was years ahead of its time. I'm talking, of course, about the Monkees. And you, comedy, music, pop culture nerd, probably love the show, but don't realize it. That's why I, Monkey superfan Takura McCullough, sit down with a variety of guests to watch every Monkees episode and discuss their glory on the Monkees podcast. Whether you're already a fan or have never seen an episode, the Monkees podcast is for you as we discuss the Monkees phenomenon, hilarious antics, and deep fandom. So check it out at monkeyspodcast.com. That's P-A-W-D-C-A-S-T or wherever podcasts are found. It's Dragon Wagon.